Hi everyone, I'm Nicole van der Hoeven, and this is day three of my week of testing. So, so far in this series, I've just been using the test builder on K6 Cloud to get um, running really quickly, and that's been a great experience, but I also wanted to see what it's like when you use the actual K6 OSS. Um, so I wanted to go fully open source and see how to build a load test from there and how intuitive it is. So I go through today um, how to install K6 OSS, running a simple test just locally and what the debugging experience is. I go over how to add checks or assertions and um, how to add tags to requests. So it was a bit of a longer one, and rather than break it up, I decided I'm just going to add timestamps down below. So skip around um, if you want to. That's kind of the nature of this like watching me learn kind of thing is it doesn't take me like five minutes to learn these things because I'm totally new. Start with the home page and follow along the instructions there like everybody else. Uh, I want the open source version because I the cloud is what I was using before. So I'm going to download this. Okay, I'm on a Mac and I do have Homebrew installed already. So that's easy. I'm just going to copy that. I'll bring I'll actually bring my terminal window over here so you can see as well. Brew install. Okay, I'll, pr I'll probably, oh, okay, that was quick. Let's just head back here and follow along with the instructions. Running K6. Okay, uh, I'm going to copy this small script. I'll save that in scripts. Um, I'll create a new folder on K6 script.js. All right, now what? Head back over there. So I should just be able to run it from the command line. Okay. All right, so I should be able to do k6 run script.js. Wow, okay, that actually worked. That was pretty cool. Let's see what we've got here. Looks like it ran one iteration for one user, which took Oh, max duration was 10 minutes. Okay, so obviously it didn't take 10 minutes to actually run one view. Oh, all right. So I guess um, 10 minutes is just like the default limit, but it actually took 1.3 seconds. That was actually pretty fast for a script to run. Granted, it's a pretty simple one. So what I want to do is add an assertion to this somehow because I, I know it fired off the request, but I don't actually know if it got the right, if it got the page that I wanted it to get. So I just wanted to say something too about how important it is to add assertions. A lot of the load testing scripts that I see, especially from beginners, don't even have assertions. And I think that that's the most, one of the most vital parts of a load testing script, because hitting an endpoint uh, and maybe even just checking to make sure that it's an HTTP 200 that is returned is not enough because you might be getting a, a, a legitimate page, a valid page, just not the one that you're looking for, especially when you're trying to interact with a page in some way. After every interaction, I think it's, it's really important to add a verification step to make sure that you're, you're on the right step of your business process. I found this section called checks and there's a way to, to get the response from that request and then put in some checks. Well, I do definitely want it to, to have an, a status of HTTP 200, but I also want to check the body for some text. Let's see what is in the, on this page to see what it returns. Okay, so maybe I'll search for this phrase because I want to make sure that even though I do get an HTTP 200, that I also definitely get this phrase back. Okay, so let's check to see if that's okay. 
we should see the checks here. Oh, check is not defined. Oops, I think I, I didn't import something. Import check. <laughs> All right. I already had sleep here, so I'll just add check. And go back and run. That's working better. Okay, and then let's see if I can um, add another check. Our, uh, all right, body, okay, find. Uh, I'll use includes, let's see if that works. Then I'm gonna paste that string there. And I'll save that and see if that works. Okay, so now we've got that text verification going. Uh, what do I wanna do now? I want to maybe run this with more than one user, or let's try it one user, but then like run it in iterations. Um, back to just running it. Using options, adding more views. Okay, so you can do it on the command line which is kind of cool because that means that you don't have to keep changing your script. Uh, duration. Okay, well that's definitely taking longer. So I would expect there to be about 30 iterations of this if, the, if just one took just one second. There were 27 iterations, which is right about the 30, 30 iteration figure that I was thinking because um, the time was slightly over one second. Yeah. Now let's add a, like another step here because right now I'm only going to the, the first one. I mean the, the home one. I'm just doing a get on this page. So, ooh, let's see if I can do a, a post. So I'll copy this. What is it anyway? Okay, cool. I'd like to do a post request because this one was just an HTTP. All right. Okay, that looks fairly standard. So let's make this the domain. Just so we can, because we're going to be reusing it, right? So um, I'll change this with domain. Oops. All right. And then uh, sleep is sleep of one is fine. Then I'm going to say um, HTTP post domain plus. Oops. So this is the flip flip coin one that we were just looking at. And then the next one will be uh, the payload. So I don't actually know what the payload or any parameters should be. So let's go back to this one. I suppose we should first actually get this page. HTTP get domain plus flip coin PHP. And, uh, okay. Oh, I know I'll add this check again. I wonder if I can make this like a global check for everything. Uh, I do, I definitely want this to be different though. So I'm going to look on, look, look for this, your bet. Let's, uh, comment that out for now. Okay, so I found this thing called um, request tags where I can put in a name so that I can kind of name a step so that it doesn't say the URL, it just says like, you know, step one or something like that. So I want to call this, oops, I'll call this on home, and I'm going to call this O2 um, visit flip coin. 
Let's see if those come up as tags when I run them. Okay, so they still don't come up here. Maybe they just come up in the cloud. So the reason that this was failing, this text verification was failing before, was because I hadn't uh, changed the value of this variable to the new page. And so it was still looking for um, text in the previous page. So let me put in, what is it, your, your bet. Okay, so I'll put your bet here. And then let's run that again, and that should work. This is why it's good to debug before you run it at load. Like a lot of these script issues can be resolved before you spend any money on um, cloud infrastructure. Okay, so both of those worked. I'm just going to copy this, except uh, I'm going to actually use this because I'm now. So in this one, I've gone to the, the home page. Here I am, um, I'm going to the flip coin page, but I haven't actually clicked any of the buttons yet. And then I'm going to, in this third step, I'm actually going to send a message. Let's see what that was. So this one will be, uh, bet, uh, I'll say heads, bet on heads, uh, click, click heads. Let's see what that does. All right, so I've opened up the developer tools here. And that's just really useful for figuring out what's happening on the protocol level. So I'll click bet on heads. And that was a post and the parameter is bet equals heads. Any other headers that I need to put in? Uh, it doesn't look like it, so it's just bet heads. All right, now let's look at how to actually do that. All right, so it's URL body parameters. All right, URL. So I'm going to put um, parameters here. Let data equals, um, what was it, bet? So if this request works, then I should see your bet heads, right? So I'm going to copy that and change the text verification to that. That way there's always going to be a check. Oops, I forgot to put that in quotes. All right. I'm pretty impressed with K6 as a tool right now, actually. Um, it was pretty easy. It, it took like a second to download it and install it from Brew. Uh, the sample script just worked the way I expected it to. Things have been pretty pretty easy to, to get up to speed on. There are a couple things that I do want to look out for. I want to make sure that there's a way to set checks globally. That's I, I would probably um, have like a, a sort of standard set of checks that I look for. Things like can't be an HTTP 404 or 4XX or 5XX. Um, I definitely want to look more into error handling. Um, and I want to see more of the debugging because a couple times I had some checks in there that were not working and they were due to my own error, but I didn't see which transaction or, or which request was um, yielding that error. So I want to kind of look more into that, maybe not in the next one, but sometime in the future. So in this week, I'm trying to get like at least a, a bird's eye view of the entire product suite. So um, I hope that you're enjoying watching me fumble along. I'm definitely learning a lot. And um, if you have any questions that you particularly want me to go into during this week or in future videos, let me know. Just catch me on Twitter. Um, probably just just message at k6 underscore io because that's just easier to spell than my last name. Catch you on the next one.